What's up again guys, Brian here at 3TR and I have another one of my own requested top 10 lists videos. Now this list was actually requested by one of my viewers going by the name of Moolhall247 and he wanted to know what are my top 10 most disappointing movies I've ever seen. Now let's get started with number 10, but before I begin I would just like to say right now that I think Johnny Depp is a truly fantastic actor. He's done a lot of great films which many of us would consider as classics. But my number 10 had to be unquestionably the worst film I've ever seen him do. And I would say that to his face. And that was Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. Now going into this film when I was much younger, I thought it was actually going to follow the book. Because for some of you that don't know, Charlie in the Chocolate Factory is actually a sequel to Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. It's a book series. And this actually was supposed to go over all, like, what Charlie is going to do with the factory. And I was really looking forward to seeing this. So I bought at least $15 worth of Willy Wonka candy, Laffy Taffy's, Runts, Nerds, you name it. I snuck it into the theater with me. And by the time I was done eating all this candy and watching this filth of a film, I threw it all up. I had no idea this was going to be a remake. I did not even watch any of the trailers. I wanted to be surprised. Now I know better. And that is why it is number 10 on this list. Going on into number 9, uh, I've got to do something a little bit generic, but I'm sure most people would add one of these films on their list. And that is Star Wars Episode 2. Now I'm going to get it this out of the way. I was about 9 years old when I saw the first Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. And as a kid, it was all flashly, and my mind wasn't really quite up to where it is now, so I generally liked it. And it wasn't until I was much older that I acknowledged what the problems with that film were, and now I think otherwise. But even when I was younger, I didn't like Episode 2. I think they spent way too much time on this love story. I kept doing this as a kid. I would do it every time. They were like, having these mushy, duffy makeout scenes. I was like, I would do that. And I did that so much through the film. Not even the lightsaber fight at the end could save this film. And in my opinion, it is the worst of the prequels. So that's why it's number nine on this list. Going on into number eight, I picked Men in Black 2. Now, I'm sure we can all agree that Men in Black 1 is a classic film. It's funny. This is Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones at their finest. They have great chemistry together. So going into number two, I was wondering, well, how are they going to continue it? You know, Kay's kind of wanted to go back to his normal life, and Jay sort of took over. I just thought the whole execution of it was just really sloppy. I mean, they had to come up with some BS excuse to bring Kay back because they knew you couldn't have Jay without Kay. So we have to find some way to bring Tommy Lee Jones back. And what they did with it was just just silly. I mean, I understand that this, these movies have comedy, but I would like my Men in Black movies to at least have some heart and some seriousness to this. Now, fortunately, we got that in Men in Black 3, and I've even heard that they're planning on doing a Men in Black 4. And if they do, I just hope it follows the same formula as Men in Blacks 1 and 3 did, and it avoids what 2 did. And that is why 2 is on this list. Going on to number 7, I picked A Good Day to Die Hard. Now... I'm a big Die Hard fan, and I actually like Die Hard's 1, 2, 3, and I even enjoyed Live Free or Die Hard. A lot of people give that movie a lot of shit because it's PG-13, but after you saw this, I'm sure you were thinking otherwise. I mean, a lot of us, including myself, were really pumped up to go see this because, you know, we were getting another part of John McClane's family, and it was going back to the rated R format, and then what we ended up getting was so much further from what Die Hard was about than I think anything any of us could have ever imagined. I literally think Bruce Willis just took this for the paycheck and he wasn't really trying. I mean, I even said in my review of this film, like over a year ago, that I'm pretty sure Bruce Willis looked at the script and he should have known this is not what John McClane would do. And he is just completely overpowered. He can survive accidents, he can survive crashes, he can survive jumping off of a fucking building, falling several stories down and somehow surviving. They turn the guy into Superman. For those of you who complained about Live Free or Die Hard and have not seen A Good Day to Die Hard, watch this film and I'm sure you'll think otherwise. And that is why it is on this list. Going on into number six, I picked The Spirit. Now, I don't really know, I didn't know too much about The Spirit. It was my first year away from college. It was going to be opening on Christmas, which I thought was a good thing. And basically, the only reason I was really pumped up to go see this movie was it looked like Sin City. And I really, really enjoyed Sin City. And I'm pumped up to see Sin City 2, A Dame to Kill for. But after watching this, it just a 
fucking train wreck. I mean, the spirit is so unlikable. They sexualize all the women in the film. And this is like Samuel Jackson at, like, when he's trying too hard to be funny. And it's not funny. I mean, there's even a scene, if I remember correctly, where he hits the spirit with a toilet. And he says, hey, laugh. Or something like that. Toilets are funny. And I'm like, no. No, Mr. Jackson. That's, that's not funny. Ugh. Next thing we have on number five, I picked Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Now, look, I'm not like most people. I actually have openly admitted that I think that Transformers is one and three are more like guilty players, and there is some enjoyability to have in those two films. And I'm even a little bit excited to go see Transformers 4 Age of Extinction. We're getting rid of Shyla Bitch and what's her name, and we're moving to a new cast. Hopefully they, you know, make the story a little bit more, let's say, entertaining. But 2 was just an utter abomination. There were racist jokes, there were sexist jokes, there were characters surviving crashes they couldn't possibly survive, and the whole title doesn't make sense. It's titled Revenge of the Fallen. I kid you not, when I saw this in the theaters, I went to the bathroom right as the final fight was going to start. I was like, okay, I have to go to the bathroom, I'm going to run really quickly, take less than, maybe, maybe less than a minute and a half. Ran out, went to the bathroom, came back, the fight was over. I'm like, what? This is called Revenge of the Fallen. You're not supposed to beat him. He's supposed to kick your ass. Uh, oh, and they handled the death of Optimus Prime so poorly. Let's just hope Age of Extinction does not make these same mistakes. Because if it does, I'm going to be a really pissed off Transformers fan that day. Number four on my list is Blade Trinity. Now, Blade 2 is actually my favorite uh, of the Blade franchise, and I actually would consider it an example of what a rated R Marvel film can do, which is why I'm you know, a little bit disappointed that Marvel would not want to make a movie like on The Punisher or Daredevil, which you know I've heard they're actually going to make um, like a little Netflix TV series, but I would really like them to actually attempt making a truly dark film. I thought The Punisher was a truly great film. And after the really great success of Blade 2, I really thought this was going to continue the formula. And they even brought in the really cool character of bringing in the original Dracula. But what we got was just a mess of a film. I mean, from what I heard throughout production, Wesley Sipes wasn't really into it. Ryan Reynolds wasn't funny. Killing off Whistler made no sense. I mean, you kill Whistler off in the first film to bring him back at the beginning of the second film, and then you're just going to kill him at the beginning of the third film? I mean, what's the point? It was just an utter mess, and I didn't even think the ending was very uh, pleasing. I mean, even the alternate ending, which I also thought was bullshit as well. Going on to number three, I picked X-Men 3 The Last Stand. Another three movie, and I feel a little bad that three is my favorite number, yet for a lot of these franchises, three is always the cursed number. And what, what, uh, what, what hasn't been said about this film? I mean, aside from it once again focusing on Wolverine, it ruined the Dark Phoenix the Dark Phoenix story. I was so pumped up to see that because if they had done that right, I would have wanted to see Dark Phoenix go up against Apocalypse. And maybe if Dexman Days of Futures Past does it right, and let's say Wolverine succeeds in his plan, that, that's what my hope is, is that he fixes the past, Jean Grey and Cyclops are still alive, but Jean somehow goes to the Phoenix stage again, and we get to see Phoenix and Apocalypse go at it. I want to see that in X-Men Apocalypse. Hopefully it doesn't do what this film does and just kill off a lot of key characters just so they can come up with some cheap way to bring them back in X-Men Days of Futures Past, which I'm willing to forgive as long as it is a great film. And that's why X-Men 3 is on this list. Going on into number two is a movie that came out last year, and that was Iron Man 3. You know, at this point, throughout all the Avengers films, Iron Man is my least favorite character at this point. I mean, he might be the most financially successful character that Disney has, but after what they did in 3, it was just ridiculous at this point. I mean, people, were, along with myself, were complaining about Iron Man 2 and how the villain was kind of underwhelming and how the jokes didn't make any sense, but this film, all it was was jokes. It didn't even feel like an action film. It felt like a drawn-out two-hour comedy. I've never been in a theater where people were laughing throughout the entire film at everything that was going on in the film. And what they did with the Mandarin is far worse than what Arnold Schwarzenegger did with Mr. Freeze. I mean, at least Mr. Freeze is actually fun to laugh at, or at least his particular version is, but the Mandarin in this film is a joke. And that is the biggest fuck you to the fans I think I've ever seen in a comic book film. 
And that leads me to number one. The number one most disappointing film I've ever seen was Green Lantern. Now look, I'm a DC person, and my favorite color is green. So heck, Green Lantern, I'm pumped up. This is going to be Warner Brothers' first attempt to step outside of Batman and Superman. I have hope. Ryan Reynolds is a good actor. I've seen him in a lot of stuff. He's funny. He could fit the Hal Jordan character pretty well. I go to see this movie. I'm pumped up. It's my most anticipated film this time. I fall asleep about an hour in. I think I took like a 15-minute break or like a little nap. I woke up. Movie didn't really pick up. Until we got to the Oa scenes. I mean, at least those scenes were cool, but there weren't enough of them. Maybe we just kept focusing on stuff that happened on Earth and stuff that I just don't care about. And I thought the final battle against Parallax was generic, and I thought it was just stupid. He flies off to Earth, flies towards the sun, and uses the sun's gravitational pull to melt Parallax? I mean, that's just cheap. And this is how bad Green Lantern was. Now, I actually thought about avoiding to go see X-Men First Class because, you know, after the lax X-Men film, which it was X-Men Origins Wolverine, I didn't want to see another X-Men film. But heck, I just saw X-Men First Class because I thought that was going to be a worse film. That movie was so fucking awesome, and I loved it just as much as X-Men 2. When I got home, I had completely forgotten I even saw Green Lantern that day. I didn't even know I saw Green Lantern until I looked through my wall and noticed there was a second ticket stuff and said Green Lantern. I was like, holy shit, did I really see Green Lantern today? That's how, that is how awesome X-Men First Class was, and that's how disappointing Green Lantern was. Hopefully, they recast Green Lantern, which I've heard they're going to do, and they do him justice in the Justice League film. And with that, those are my top ten most disappointing films. Now, I really would like to hear what are some of your guys' most disappointing films that you've ever seen. Tell me in the comments down below, and if you like this video, feel free to like, comment down below, and please subscribe to keep track of me in my future movie, video game reviews, and topic videos like this one. And like always, thank you guys for watching, you're awesome, and I'll see you next time.